and then I'll go back and convert to a monochrome again because I want this darker. So I'm going to go and we'll take a look here a little bit closer. I'll zoom in here and we'll go to effects, adjust, tone curve, and I'm going to want to darken this even though I've got this effect on here. I'm going to darken this just a bit, preview, and we'll select OK here and see what we get. I'm just darkening this because I don't like this grayness. Now I like where I'm at with my darkness. Now I'm going to go ahead and convert this to a monochrome with a transparent background and hold my transparencies effectively. So I'll go to bitmaps, let Corel process a save here, bitmaps, mode, I'm going to go to black and white. I'm going to come down to Floyd Stordberg because I want to have this pixelation here to hold, to work with, to keep my artistic look here. I'm going to select OK. Now this is kind of rough, I'm going to, but I'm going to undo this now. Now what I'm going to do with what we did before, I'm going to go left click and make this a transparent background. And then I'm going to go to bitmaps and now I'm going to go to convert to bitmap with a transparent background to a grayscale just because I want to hold the transparency and put some blur on this again. So now I want my transparent background so when I convert back to a monochrome I'm going to have that nice soft raster edge on my effect. And I'll select OK. And I'm going to bring myself out of my Floyd Sturdberg conversion. So now I'll go to bitmaps, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to remove the chunky pixelation that's in this one pixel. We'll get a preview. And you just go take some time and experiment with this. Now you can see I've got some nice softness in here as opposed to this just black and white hard edge stuff. Go to preview again here and you can see that just gives me a soft edge, but I'll be able to hold that as a monochrome. And I'll select OK. And now we've got a nice black monochrome and we've converted our vector to an artistic look, as you can see here. Now very easy to print and separate and draw because it'll go and work as a monochrome when I convert it. Because I've got these nice soft edges on it, it'll look very nice. So now all I need to do is bitmap mode black and white and you'll see that everything's blacked out here I can't see the detail because that mask is coming in it doesn't really how, matter how I do it but I prefer to go with line art select OK now left click to knock out my background right click to change my fill and now I've got a nice artistic look going on here as opposed to just hard edge vector as you can see here now you spend some time experimenting with this you'll be able to really dial it in and get some really interesting designs and off the wall looks and effects so this is set my black so I'll just right click and leave this as a black and the next thing I want to do is go to my white. Now on my white what I want to do is I've converted this to a grayscale already. I just want to soften it up a little bit and then apply some effects to it. So all I'm going to do is go to bitmap and all I want to do is just give this a little bit of effect so I think I'll go down here to just a little bit to distort it. Actually I want to go to creative and we'll use scatter again here. We've got three and three preview and we'll take a look at that. That'll be okay. We just want to break that up a little bit. Select OK. And actually on this particular graphic, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this a soft edge and I'm going to put some texture in this in the background. We'll see how that looks. Next thing I want to do is just go to bitmaps and I'll just blur that up maybe just a touch. And I'll go to blur, Gaussian blur, preview. Let's see what we get. That'll be fine. You can see we broke that edge up nice. If I did a straight blur, I wouldn't have any breaking up in there. Select OK. And now this, as a grayscale, what I want to do is I'm going to apply some effects to this. So what I'm going to do is actually going to go ahead and Lloyd Sternberg this one. Go to bitmap and we'll go to mode and we'll go to black and white. I'll come down here to Floyd Sternberg. Select OK. And this is now a monochrome. And what I want to do is left click to knock out my background. I'll fill this with a white. I'll bring some color in and a vector object in the background just so I can see what I'm working with. Come here to my properties bar, send that to the back of the page. We'll fill that with, let's say, a blue for now just so we have some contrast. Now this would be our white for our color separations. And I'll come here and I'll grab this and I'll copy this. And I'll go back a page and I'll paste this in. Now you can see I've got a nice artistic effect starting to go on. A little bit loose, got some things showing through here. But this is what we're seeing on the shelves in the retail. You know, this very loose, broken up, distressed type artistic look. And you can see what's starting to come forth here in this design. We've left Vector and we've got something very different going on here. Now the next thing I want to do actually is I want to try applying some textures to my white just to see how that works with my design. So 
when I left click on top of my monochrome object, it's different than vector, and you'll notice if I move this, that moves that. But if I do something very simple, I'll hit Control-Z, hold down my Alt click, click, and I can see my status bar. Now I've got my white object. Now I'm going to open my Fashion Factory. I'll go to Advanced Tools, Fashion Factory, bring that up. I'm going to go into my textures, and I've got uh, just a ton of seamless textures I can work with here. But I want to add some effects to the background there. And actually, I'll take a look at Scrape out here. I'm going to select Scrape and apply that as a transparency. Now, that came in this way, but I have control over this through the transparencies in Corel. So I'm going to go to my transparencies. I'm going to come up here to my properties bar. And when I go to my transparencies tool, my properties bar will change to my interactive pattern transparency. Now, these are seamless, so I can make them any size. I have total control over this texture now. I want to left click here at my starting and bring that down. You can see that turns it left click over here at my ending point and bring that up. Now I've got this texture in this monochrome. I've got a left click to knock the background out. And I can see that what I'm dealing with is that when I go and apply these textures to the monochromes, I want to right click and see if I can get a black in there and knock out my fill. You can see that I'm having a problem with these transparencies. And I came here so that I could show you that before you go trying to apply transparencies to monochromes, you actually want to go back to grayscale bitmaps and then apply your transparency because as a grayscale bitmap, you can apply this and then go back to a monochrome. Now, I know this is a little complex, but if you watch the video a couple times or you can rewind it here and watch again, you'll see how by going back to a grayscale, applying my texture, then coming back to a monochrome, I'll be able to have this look in my design. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and control Z, control Z, but you can see we're going to build this nice texture into a monochrome of our white in the background and have a totally off the wall texturized artistic looking design. And once you know how to do these, you can do them in minutes. Now I'm doing this very slow in the tutorial because I'm talking about what I'm doing, explaining what's going on and what we're dealing with. But when I go to set these designs up, I can literally set these up in five or ten minutes. Now I'm going to hit control Z and go back to where we go back to our original. And actually all I want to do Sometimes I even get confused myself dealing with this stuff, but all I want to do here actually is click on this, click on my properties bar, click here, go back to my textures here, and let's see what we're dealing with here. Let's refresh. What do I have here? I've got, my, I've got the wrong object selected. Okay. Alt, get the white, go to my transparency and take that off. Okay, there we go. I didn't have to hit all that. Un uh, control on Z. I thought I could hit it maybe two or three times and I'd be right back, but all I need to do is take the transparency off of there. So getting back to with this white, what I want to do is hold down Alt, make sure I've got this white click selected. I'm going to, and actually I went down to the blue, go down here to the white. I've got Alt selected. All I want to do is go to bitmaps, convert to bitmap. We're going to make this grayscale transparent background anti aliasing on 300 dpi with the white. Select OK and let that process. Now, with that set up, I'm going to go back to my Fashion Factory because sometimes when you try to put textures and you've already got transparency in the background of your monochromes, it doesn't work. But you'll see how we can take this grayscale that we created, apply our texture to it. I'll go apply as transparency and that's only going to apply into my white. Now this is grayscale that I'm working with, not a monochrome. Now you can see we've got some great effect in here now. And I'm going ahead, I'll, you can go ahead and get total control over this. If I want to make it completely off the wall, I could do something like that. And just change the size of it and go with that effect the way it is there. And as you can see, just that simple adjustment, I've got complete control over this texture. If I want to give it another look, I can open my Fashion Factory, come in and grab a different texture, like Scratch Patch here, apply as transparency. And now I've got an entirely different effect.